say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Outdoor Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, how are you? You look ravishing as usual. Oh, wow, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We have a fire going. And normally during our cowboy cooking segments, we would have a cowboy hat on and jeans and boots. But today we've got on cowboy flip-flops. It's finally nice out. And don't yeah. question our cowboy hoodedness. That's right. <laughs> we have cows. And I still have my trusty Steed Moses, which mm -hmm. I ride off into the sunset right That's there's right. a bowl of That's Alpo right. every evening. So... How dare question our cowboy? That's right. Surely I like your would. cowboy hat. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but you know what? We've got a lot going on around the farm. We've got some new stuff today. We're going to visit a farm where we're going to get some of our vegetables here. Isn't it nice to know that in today's day and age, you can go to stores like our favorite store or places where they raise mm -hmm. their own vegetables and we know where they are. And we know if we choose to do so, we can find those without any kind of spray or anything on them. And That's we choose right. to do that as much as we can. Right. We can't be a thousand percent organic, but... We try. Yeah, as best we can. Speaking of something a little bit different, today we're going to do, for a side, one of my favorite things in the world. I haven't had it for years. I used to have a friend that used to make me this all the time. Fried cabbage. I've never had that. I'm and looking forward to it. I'm You've looking, never had no, fried cabbage. Not, That's an old, old-fashioned old Kentucky thing. Um, it involves bacon grease. I like that. And cabbage. And we'll talk about all that later. But first of all, since the dawn of mankind, since man started settling one spot, they started domesticating rabbits. Mm -hmm. And up until the last 50, 100 years, that was a regular source of protein. Now, when people started making cartoons and regular feature-length films with animals speaking, uh -huh. <laughs> became popular. Um, you know, rabbit was a regular part of people's meals, whether right. you hunted it or it was domesticated. Right. It is delicious. Yes, it's it is. healthy. Um, it's not that fatty at all. It's very good for you. What a good source of protein. Now, what is this we got from Mac? And we'll go visit him later. But that's garlic. It looks like an onion, but it's garlic. I guess you could call that a garlic starter before it pods out. That's it looks like an onion. Wow, it smells amazing. It smells like garlic. Well, it is. It's because, as, as he garlic. said, it it's is garlic. garlic. Now, tonight we're going to use a cast iron Dutch oven for our rabbit recipe. Now, we're going to start out with our cast iron and a skillet up okay. on top. What I'm going to need is probably two of these onions. And okay. instead of cutting them in little pieces, let's cut them in rings. Okay. Thin rings. We've got some fresh mushrooms. And we decided to go with shiitake on this. We're going to tie together our little bit of parsley, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of oregano, and we're going to make a wonderful rabbit dish, quick and easy. Not that quick. An hour, maybe. Total okay. time. Now, again, rabbit is delicious. If you don't have any rabbit and you want to do this with chicken, you can do this just as well. But right up the road, our buddy at Ghost Mountain Rabbitry furnished us with some rabbit. We went up there and bought it, and we traded around. I'm telling you what, there's nothing like fresh rabbit. It's absolutely delicious. I've never had it. Tell you what I'd like, Nikki, if you will, okay. if you'll cut me up some celery. All right. I'm going to get me a skillet going here in a minute with some butter in it. Third to a half a stick of butter. So you get a bunch of onions and some celery. And let's take a little bit of that garlic. Get up in here too. All right. A little bit of our garlic. At this point, Nikki, if you'll get my 12 inch Dutch oven mm -hmm. over here, I'm going to lay some coals down, start getting it hot. We're going 400 degrees today, which is 10 on the bottom, 19 on the top. All right, so now to go ahead and heat things up a bit. We're gonna go ahead and, head and take most of a beer. Now this is New Belgium Amber Ale. So we're gonna go ahead and get our liquid hot and I don't know, a little over a cup chicken broth. And if you don't do alcohol, don't worry. The alcohol will cook out of that. Promise you won't stumble down the stairs after you've had your rabbit. Let's go back to our onions, check them out. They're getting close. At the last minute, we're going to toss those mushrooms in there and let them get a little, little bit cooked. Now, Nikki, if you will, I'm going to lift the top 
if you'll dump that into here, we'll let them start cooking. Right now, right here, we're just gonna take a little bit of thyme, mostly thyme, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of parsley. Okay, drop our bouquet garni. Boom. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of salt. Well, let's actually put a lot of salt and a lot of pepper. That's good. Uh, well, a little bit more no salt. And some pepper. A little salt and a little pepper. Let's just dredge those parts. Look what a good looking piece of Yum. meat. If you can't tell me that's not delicious. All right, same pan. Let's not dirty anything up. We don't have to. All right, lightly dredge these in flour. Drop it in. All right, now we're gonna take about two tablespoons of stone ground mustard and a pinch of brown sugar. Well, the, the wonderful thing about this is, is when this is done, you're gonna take your juices because you are the queen of gravy. That's right. And you like your potatoes. So we're gonna make a gravy out of this remaining juice oh, yeah. in the end. Now, something I like to use to give it a little celery flavor, it's called nature seasoning. I'm gonna put just a hair of that in. And to add to that good, rich, salty, stocky flavor, I'm gonna drop a chicken bouillon cube in there as well. I might check my rabbit, see where it's at. Yum. Now we're gonna get this nice and brown and started. And it's gonna finish the rest away in our 12 inch lodge Dutch oven. Look at there, we're cooking. I'm gonna take my rabbit out and lay in here. And I'm gonna check this in about 45 minutes, but I'm anticipating about an hour's worth of cooking. And because it's set there and cooked a while, I'm gonna reinforce some of my charcoal. While this cooks for about an hour, let's go visit with our friends from Elmwood Stock Farm. Mike is back. Look out, old Mikey's back. Right here. Elmwood Welcome. Stock Farm. Good to be here. I see green everywhere. Now, what kind of job can you possibly have where you can reach down anywhere you are? Pea shoot. Pea shoot. Tastes like peas, you know why? It is a pea. That's delicious. Absolutely. On a salad, there's nothing like it. So we can, we can plant these, germinate them here in the greenhouse, and be ready to eat in like seven or eight days. Wow. Now, you have... I'm going to explain to people who don't know, what is the CSA? CSA is Community Supported Agriculture. Customers pay us now in the beginning of the year, then we uh, have a contract with them to deliver whatever seasonally available all summer. So they don't know what they're going to get. We don't know what they're going to get till the day before. But so we take all of this stuff um, and we'll deliver. We have drop-offs in Lexington, Frankfurt, Cincinnati. I wanted to see how this whole thing starts. Here we are in a greenhouse with kale and lettuce and what is this, parsley and? Celery. Celery. Swiss chard. This is where it all starts. Lots of kale, because we want we can kale every week. Kale's the, the magic food, it is. isn't it? It is. You're in an interesting line of work, but anything that's interesting or fun usually involves a whole lot of labor. As we look at it, I see cows coming in, I saw sheep, we saw turkeys. You know, it's not just about plants, you raise meat as well. Right. Absolutely. And, and everything's organic. Everything's certified organic. There's not, it hasn't been a single Saturday at the farmer's market that a customer hasn't come to our booth and said, my doctor told me to eat the food that you grow, whether it's grass-fed beef or organic vegetables, because of whether it's toxins or whether it's uh, antibiotics or the whatever, the wrong kind of fat in meat. So we say, sure, it's hard to eat 100% organic 100% of the time. But if you do as best you can, then you can relax a little bit when you are at a restaurant and you just don't worry about it for a little bit. We were talking about onion sets. These are not your typical onion sets. What does that mean when you're, when you're planting onions? So we can't get onion sets, those nice little bulbs that you just can plant very easily. So we have to get organic seed. So someone individually flicked the little seeds into those trays to, for us to have onions. And they won't be ready when everybody else has spring onions. We're still just, they'll still be in the greenhouse. Wow. Uh, but this fall, they'll be awesome. 
Now, being in this line of work, I mean, we're surrounded by life. We're surrounded by tomatoes and everything. Everything's coming along wonderfully. I'm doing my own meat. I'm right. a carnivore, hardcore. Right. Good, good for you. And the, the cows have taken over my garden spot. So I'm going to do like some tomatoes and stuff like that. But you know what? I'm going to depend on you right. for my vegetables and stores right. around that sell vegetables sure. that, from folks like you. Well, right. we know where it came from. Right. So what's the chances of us getting a little tour today? Show, show us what's going on. Let's go look. I'm ready. Go. Let's go. Okay, so this is a seed room, a busy little room where it starts off over here with the dirt, then it slides towards you, then we see a tray. Right. Then what's in your hand there? So this is a vacuum seeder. There's a little hole pattern that lines up with the holes in the, the cells of the tray. So you roll the seed around like a game, and when each one of these little holes has a seed vacuum stuck to the hole, the rest of the seeds fall down in this little tray. When you flip it over, break the vacuum, the seeds all drop down into the tray one, uh, together, and then you can move it on to the next and one. And dead center, as opposed dead to center. being, right. wow. Right, so we can do, these are two, those, these, normally the styrofoam are 248s, and we can do 248 seeds as fast as you can get them to, to line up on the tray. Wow, then off to the germination room, which, the germination has, room. which has moisture and... Uh, hot, moist heat, so that they all germinate at the same time, then when they go to the greenhouse, the hot and cold pockets of the greenhouse, uh, we get more uni better uniformity if they all germinate than no matter where they go in the greenhouse. Because you like that uniformity when you're using a transplanter. If some are tall and some are short, some will get buried or some will be too tall and get hang up in the equipment. So we like that uniformity when it's time to plant in the field. Now, before we go to that backfield back there, do these uh, look familiar? These guys came from Moses and Maggie's. With the dogs here, nothing gets in this whole field. They're going to patrol the whole field. I tell people they do a great job when they're awake. <laughs> when they're awake. And that's the old man over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's about eight, you say, seven or yeah, eight? Yeah, yeah. He kind of knows he's uh, the changing of the guard here a little bit. Yeah. So he can chill a bit and yeah. relax. Yeah, yeah. I see kale, and what else is out here? That lettuce, uh, several kinds of kale, several kinds of lettuce. Uh, this is the early transplants that we got out. Uh, the weather's been kind to us this year. Um, big storm that brought this tree down uh, didn't. We got hail on the south part of the farm, but we didn't right here. Wow. So we just dodged a bullet right there. But So we get these plants out. They've already gotten acclimated. They'll, the sun, the beautiful weather we're having today, they'll just jump in the next mm -hmm. two weeks. Now, let's talk about something I found fascinating. You talked about, I see your cattle over here, and I ask you, what do you do if it's organic about fertilization? And you said? We're on an eight-year crop rotation. So the field behind us here that we're laying the plastic, that's where the long feeder, is. it's been an alfalfa for five years. After five years, we plow it. The alfalfa is a legume that takes nitrogen from the air. It feeds the soil, feeds the plants. When we turn that under, it's called green manure. When we turn that under, then it feeds the microbes that then feed our plants. So the long feeders, the long season crops, tomato, pepper, cucumber, squash, those go in that field first year. Then come behind that with a cover crop. Then this is the second year field. This was tomatoes last year. So then these are lighter feeders. Um, we're still on 38 inch rows, so there's plenty of soil for the roots to find the nutrients. Then behind these, these will come off in the summer, we can do it again in the fall. So we get two crops off of this field. Then after this, we do the overwinter garlic, then the peas, the beans, the other legumes, and other light feeders. It'll fill the third year of vegetables, then back to five years of alfalfa. So we don't have to bring fertility off farm to produce the crops. Wow. Sounds like a fairly complicated thing, but it's so, it's so well, natural. It's, 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 it's the culture that built this part of the world. It's, it's what right. old timers did. Right. You would not Because they didn't have synthetic. They didn't have synthetic fertilizer. Wow. So this is what they did. So we're, we're, it's the best of the old, and then we do have the new technologies like the plastic for weed control, moisture control, and fancy planters and all kinds of things. So it's a real combination between old and new. So the bugs, what do you do about the bugs? They get some, you get some? So no. Um, the, when you have the healthy balance of soil, it's just like a healthy person, if they scratch themselves, they don't get sick or have a problem, they heal over. 
So a healthy plant is resistant to the bugs in the first place. By also having the diversity that we have, there's thousands of species of beneficial insects. By never spraying any pesticides, the beneficial insects still outnumber the pests. Wow. And that's a whole other segment we could do, but there, there's wasps that are so tiny that you would call them a gnat, and they're even smaller than a gnat. But they lay their egg in the aphid. When the egg hatches, the larvae eats the guts of the aphid and hops out and goes to make new ones, kills the aphid. So you, you're How having cool work done for you. Absolutely, it's like National Geographic out here. <laughs> you know, we've talked about the cows, we've talked about the sheep, we've got to talk about the chickens, so I'm, with chickens comes eggs. Right. So I suppose that's all part of the process here too. If people it wanted grass-fed beef or chickens Absolutely. or turkey, it's all natural. Absolutely. Right here. Everything's certified organic. The feed is non-GMO, no pesticides in the feed for the chickens. Uh, they're out on pasture. So I think people are finding out about these things and finding out little by little, they want to know where their food's coming from. I know where mine's coming from. Right. Part of it's right here. Right. And I want to thank you. Thank you. For the hard work that you do. Appreciate to it. To make sure this stuff happens. Appreciate it. I can't wait to get my first bag. There you go. <laughs> thank you, Mike. <laughs>what you got for us today? This is called a category eight. It's very simple, just a few ingredients. I like simple. It's very easy. People have accused me of being simple. <laughs> oh, no, Tim. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do, fill it up with ice, of course. Mm -hmm. I like to use a copper mug for this. You don't have to. If you have a julep cup, that's fine. You can use a regular glass. This just gets it very good and frosty. So what I do is start out with some spiced rum of your choice. Put about two shots in there, so that'll equal about three ounces. All right, so we've got our spiced rum in there. I use a ginger-infused simple syrup that I make. Very easy, just sugar, water, some ginger root, and some ginger ale soda if you'd mm -hmm. like. And I like to make this drink pretty sweet, so I do about two or three teaspoons. And I top it up with the ginger soda. And I always love to squeeze an orange in the summer. Perfect Give patio drink right there. And there we have it. Category eight. Category eight. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. Said his mama took a big step to drink, haul off, smack the far out of his pap. He could swim like a beaver before he could walk, chew and spit backer before he could talk. Said he cut his first tooth on an old steel trap. Take some muddy river water to quench your thirst, he'll eat anything that won't eat him first. Walked on all forward with a bow in his back. He a lonesome critter when the cows call, river at lets out a bud curdle and squall. I swear it'll make the hair stand up on your neck. His daddy was a riverboat gambler, just a passion too. His mom was an out cast Cherokee squaw and died. He was too. Raised in a cave by an old mama wildcat. Boy ain't got no name in him, everybody calls him a river rat. Town, he had love on his mind, looking around, and the men and the women in the kids run for their life. Except for Almina Bottoms, partial to him, bless the heart, she was ugly as sin, or out there on the Main Street River, that made her his wife. Now I have been in the Tucker River Cliffs, they say river rats still exist, when the moon is full, he cries out for his mate. There's been several people went to look for him, some of them ain't come back again, they said the river rat cut them all up for catfish bait. His daddy was a riverboat gambler just for passing through. His mom was an outcast Cherokee squaw and died in the woods too. Raised in a cave by an old mama wildcat. That boy ain't got no name and everybody calls him a river rat.
look at that. Now we're gonna leave that as it is, it's done. I had a friend on Facebook the other day who was talking about fried cabbage and just ding, 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 yeah. with rabbit, are you I've kidding me? I've never had it, I can't wait. There's nothing to it, old timey thing. We're getting our bacon going, okay? We got about six pieces of bacon, six, seven pieces of bacon. And we're gonna fry this up until it's done and get some bacon grease. Now that's the same pan we fried rabbit in, it doesn't matter, a little bit of that flour in there, we're only good, thicken it yeah. up later. While the bacon's going, we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this head of cabbage, we're gonna take the first couple layers off. We're gonna cut it up into small, smaller pieces so we can fry it evenly. We're gonna take this onion, cut it up into small rings, kinda of like what we did for the rabbit. Okay. We're gonna take the bacon aside once it's done in there, leave most of the grease in there, and we're gonna turn this cabbage over and over and over. Now we're gonna take a little shot, apple cider vinegar, some brown sugar, and the brown sugar gives a little sweet. Now we're gonna come back with some nature seasoning, not that much, and drop a cube of chicken bouillon in there. When we cut all that up in there, we just keep mixing that over, turning over until it gets, the, the leaves are very malleable. Okay. And then we got us something special. Okay, look at that. Cabbage is done, it smells delicious. Nikki's gonna take this, put it in another dish. We're gonna use the same skillet to make the gravy with. And we're about to get there. That's gonna be falling off the bone. Yeah. All right, and you remember the simple way to make gravy. Usually I have cornstarch. This time we had flour, which is, works as good. Cornstarch is my favorite, but I do equal parts of flour and water. Mix that up with a fork. And we're just gonna add that in and stir it up and it's gonna go quick. You're talking boom. Boom, we got gravy. Now look at that. Yum. If that ain't country, you can wow. take it to the bank or something like that. That's what they say. Look at that. It's falling off the bone. Oh, look at that skin mm. right there. That is good. I love your gravy. Oh, I like that. I love your. I gotta try this cabbage. I've never had this before. And You've I love, never had fried cabbage. No, but I love cabbage. You love that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, well, I could eat that. This is one of my new favorite meals. Yum. You wanna start raising rabbits? Maybe, no, let's just buy them, it's easier. Mm, let's go to John. I'm telling you, it's just delicious. Rep's now we're delicious. starving, we had a lot to do on the farm today, but man, oh man, it was worth the wait. And you can tell it's falling off the mm. bone here when you see that bone sticking out there and it slid off, it's time to eat. Now, if you'd like other recipes, where would you find them as farmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you I'm really? I'm trying to eat here. Yeah, oh, but sorry. that's where I go. Timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, we have billions of recipes on there, how to's, and if you're not our Facebook friend, what should you do? Go to our Facebook page and I would hit like. Instantly, boom, yes. you're on. We can talk about recipes, we can have fun. Other than that, Miss Farmer, at this time, it's all about good times, good friends, good eats. I want to eat. We'll see you next week with a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm. To order a cookbook, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.